Blender 4.2 has just moved to the BCOM4 release candidate stage, which means that the Blender Foundation is only six days away from fully releasing Blender 4.2. This is going to be a big update in numerous ways, but before I get into what makes me most excited about this update, I wanted to give you the short ADHD version of the changes. The graph editor for animating has significant performance improvements, as we can see in the video released by the Blender Foundation. You can see on the left here, in version 3.6, the graph editor is quite slow, and in 4.2, it seems like it's going a lot faster. Next up, the compositor now has GPU acceleration for final renders. In addition, it has a rerun CPU backend, which improves performance, and certain areas are now up to 25 times faster. In the core of Blender, they've updated the undo function, which should be faster now. Cycles now has a feature called Ray Portals. You can access it by creating a Ray Portal BSDF node, which can transport rays to another location within the scene. This can be used for connecting two spaces through a portal, like this uh, image shows, or by simulating a camera feed. In addition, the principled BSDF node now supports physically accurate thin film interference effects for specular reflection and transmission. That's a mouthful, but let me break it down for you. If we go to this pull request, you can see they show an example of what this would look like. Essentially, uh, it would allow you to create more realistic bubbles and, and that sort of thin film thing, like what they're talking about. Finally, for the cycles improvements, Open Image Denoise is now GPU accelerated on AMD GPUs, whereas previously it was not. Next up in importing and exporting, there's a new way to do collection exports. This can be useful for game engine work, for example, if you're in a studio and you need to export a lot of models uh, in GLTF, which is essentially the new uh, .obj. It can pack all your, all your textures in one file. Uh, that's uh, now way easier to export an entire collection. Uh, there's a whole panel for it in the collection organizer as we can see here. Next up, uh, in Blender 4.2, Rotation Snap Increment can now be uh, customized to help you transform objects more precisely. This can be found in the uh, Snapping menu. If we go down to the effect Rotate, you can now adjust the Rotation Increment and uh, adjust more precisely. Just make sure you have Snapping turned on. In the modeling and UV section, Curves Editing has gotten a few new tools. There's a new operator to uh, subdivide curves, switch direction of curves, and toggle whether curves are cyclic. These tools should make it a little easier to work with curves. Next up in the rendering section, there's a new color management view transform called Kronos PBR, which can be accessed by uh, going under view transform. Kronos PBR Neutral is what you're looking for. And if we go to the website here, you can see the differences. Let me pop these open. Uh, so you can see this is Kronos. This is AGX. And this is Standard. So Standard, AGX, Kronos. In my personal opinion, I think Kronos looks pretty damn good. Uh, AGX has pre previously replaced Filmic for me, and now I think uh, Kronos is going to be replacing AGX for me. So, In the sculpting section, there are a couple new tools, polyline masking and lasso hiding, uh, line hiding and polyline hiding. Uh, so hopefully those tools are good for those of you who sculpt. I can't speak more to it because I don't personally use that. In the user interface, there are a couple improvements. Uh, a notable one is in the depth of field section on cameras, you can now use an eyedropper to determine the focus distance so that you can obviously eyedrop on the specific thing you want to focus on. In addition, there's a big UI change, which uh, you can see here. Instead of add-ons, there's no add-on tab anymore. It's now called an extension, uh, which has online access in some way. Um, I personally will probably still do it the old way. I like having the zip files in a, in a little extensions folder. And now for the biggest change uh, is EV Next. The EV Next render engine has been completely rewritten to facilitate numerous changes. 
Now, before I talk about the uh, EV Next render engine in detail, I wanted to show you all how to get the beta version before it gets released. Um, so you can navigate to this website here, builder.blender.org, download slash daily. The link will be in the description. This is where they release daily builds that uh, they're just not, you know, release worthy to the general public. But if you want to test out new betas or new alphas, you can even see beta or alpha 4.3 is in here, which uh, they haven't even really talked about what features they want yet in that. Uh, but the one we're looking for is Blender 4.2.0 Beta. Um, it may not be this exact version because they update this like sometimes hourly depending on new builds and, and whatnot. Just go ahead and hit the download. You're going to want the X64 uh, more than likely. ARM64 is for like uh, these new computers that are coming out with ARM processors on a laptop. You really don't need those. So anyway. Once that's downloaded, <clears throat> you'll get a zip file, which you can go ahead and extract uh, with WinRAR, or I think Windows 11 now has a unzipping tool built right into it. And uh, once it finishes, you can go ahead and click into the folders and run Blender EXE. And now you can see we have uh, Blender 4.2.0 beta, and uh, it might prompt you to import settings and stuff. I have already done that because I've been messing around with it. Um, so yeah, this is Blender 4.2. You can see there are new features in here, ray tracing for the EV engine, which I will now go ahead and talk about. The biggest change that I am excited for with EV Next is the rework to volumetrics and lighting. As you can see in this Blender 4.1 scene, when I extend this thing here and we go to the shading tab, you can see we have the emission piped into the volume and it's just showing up as black, you know. But if we move it to surface, it actually shows up. So as you can tell, the volumes don't really work within uh, Blender 4.1. But if we go to 4.2, a little laggy but if we go to 4.2 and we do the same thing you can see we get true volumetric uh you know thrusters here um on this model and um traditionally blender has not been blender ev specifically has not been good with handling complicated uh shapes with volumes traditionally it would just default to a key so i'm glad to see a new volumetric impl implementation and you can see it's a little buggy in this model this is just the way i'm, I'm handling the shape keys that's causing that so um yeah in addition to volumes being supported there's another change on the back end which is shown by twitter user rpg that volumes are now dithered meaning that flickering with when working with them is now gone. If we have a look at his video here. Uh, previously in the old version it would flicker quite a lot uh, and now you can see there's no flickering. If we go back to Blender 4.1 I can show you another big change and that's that emissive materials actually emit light. Now it does look like this is emitting light but that's only because this material here is slightly reflective. Um, if we go to Blender 4.2, you can see this is what real like ray tracing illumination looks like. Now there is currently a bug or a feature limitation that uh, surfaces that aren't being actively viewed don't actually emit light. So you can see this is sort of casting this weird, weird shadow here. Hopefully that gets resolved in a future version. Another big change that I don't have an example of, but Southern Shoddy showed off, is that Eevee now has support for displacement in real time, whereas previously it was only supported by cycles. So yeah, that's EV Next. I hope you all download it and check it out. Make sure to report any bugs you see. You can do that by going up to help and then report a bug, and just go ahead and fill out a bug report. I've reported a few myself, and uh, hopefully we can get every bug uh, squashed before the full release in a few days, or in six days, I mean.